amazing wrestlers in the world, and he has a dangerous new attitude. Cedric Alexander is in action next on CWF Worldwide. He said, quite frankly, Ooh. nice guy stuff is not cutting it anymore. No, it's not. And we've known Cedric Alexander to be one of the, the true nice guys in wrestling for a long time. And, and we see already that's it, 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 it's not enough. He, he is legitimately one of the best in the world. Well, George South would be real unhappy with him laying on the top rope like that. Yes, he would. But nevertheless, uh, the big fault, the big flaw in Cedric Alexander for so long was that he was too nice, yes. that he was too easygoing, too passive. He was not aggressive enough. In recent weeks, be it in Ring of Honor, be it in Premier Wrestling Experience, pitch, all over the world that Cedric Alexander wrestles, we have seen an increased aggression in this young man. You know, and Cecil, you were an in-ring competitor for a number of years, and you can attest to this. You can only feel passed over for so long. You can only feel uh, like you're banging your head against the wall for so long before the tension that's been building and building and building finally breaks. And that may be what has happened with Cedric Alexander, who now makes no bones about the fact that he will win by any means necessary. Yes, sir. And something eventually changes. You get pushed far enough and either you change your attitude or, or it changes you. And that's what we're seeing right here. And I don't want to, uh, you know, no sell Smith Garrett here because he's a fine, amazing young athlete. And this is easily the biggest match of his career. Mm. And he has really captured the hearts and minds of the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium, has Smith Garrett. Both these men have, you heard, pretty much a 50-50 split here in the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium. But as soon as Cedric Alexander started running his mouth to these people, his 50%, uh, a great many of them slid over to the Smith Garrett side. This is absolutely a guy that the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium loves, a rising star, a, a real prospect. Somebody, uh, honestly, CWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling could be in Smith Garrett's hands one day. He could be the top dog. And you're right, Cecil Scott, the biggest opportunity of his young career right here, a win against Cedric Alexander can catapult him into the national and even international spotlight right here on CWF Worldwide. Yes, sir. And we see right now he may have a slight power edge in this match. But Cedric will definitely have the agility. Nice sunset flip. Gets out at two. Cedric is so quick, so explosive. Trucked down by Smith. Leap frog of his own there. Here comes Cedric. Sunset move of his own. Us. Oh, Smith Garrett stops it and puts his junk in his face. Oh, it's Cedric. We talked last week about the pride of the Kamikaze kids. Cedric Alexander is just as prideful in getting a man's. 2015 or not, having that stuck in your face is no fun. Very, very true. Referee Kevin Pierce. <laughs> Kevin Pierce. He's much having to. Ooh. I was going to say, he's much having to restrain Cedric Alexander, but the restraints just came off. What does that mean? Oh, I don't know. That's the line. You got to be careful because Smith Garrett is a, a Virginia boy. He will throw down with you. He's a city boy, though. Lives, lives in downtown. Goes to the night spots. Hey. May occasionally bring a young lady home with questionable morals. I wouldn't know anything about that. Did Alexander just go to the eyes? Yes, he did. 
I ne never thought I'd see the day where Cedric would go to the eyes. Ooh. I do know Cedric would do that, hit a man as hard as he possibly can. That will never change, I don't think. No, he has always been one to do that. Woo! Huge back body drop. Yes, yeah, Smith's trying to put something together here. Man, look at that height, that elevation. Beautiful elevation from Garrett. And Cedric Alexander is going to take a break outside. He may or may not be safe out there, Sea Bear. Smith going to fly? Yet yeah, no. Cedric Alexander a little too smart. No, Smith Garrett with a baseball slide. That was great thinking from the young lion. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 clears up. Woo. Up and over. Crashing down with all his body weight on top of Cedric. Ask that guy from the Bariquas that wrestled Edge how bad that can turn out. Wow. Like that reference? Yeah, 1997, brother. Alexander on the ropes, literally. Smith Garrett going to give him 10 upside the side of his head. And no matter how bad you are. Ooh. Oh! Maybe that's for earlier. Oh! That does not feel good. Ref Kevin Pierce getting right in Alexander's face and the attitude change in Cedric Alexander is night and day for a guy who the argument was that he was too nice. Alexander has gone all the way. If he was a race car, Alexander has gone all the way into the red in the attempt to try to springboard his career to the next level. Yes, he has. And I, I say again, I'm going to wait till he kicks him here first. Well, he may not. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, he kicked him right in the back. But Cedric, and I said before, he is a phenomenal wrestler. He is one of the top contenders everywhere he goes. And having been in the ring with him, I can attest, he hits harder than just about anybody. But then you add this jerk of an attitude. He's a very dangerous guy right now. Been spending a lot of time lately with one Beta Scott, and she will give Lucky any guy. man impure ideas in more ways than one. I want to point out no relation, by the way. Mm. I want to clear that up because, you know. Mm. Elbow. Got to break free. Hold on, hold on. Oh. I like for there to be some relation. Alexander makes the cover. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point this out. Not a lot of body weight. Not a lot of body-to-body -body contact. A very arrogant cover. Not only did he not hook the leg, but not a lot of body-to-body -body contact. Right, which is very un-Alexander-like. It's, it's almost like... I don't know, a little bit of hubris maybe where he's getting a little too cocky. We, we've seen it so many times. We might be seeing a splash here. A double stomp maybe. Oh, neither. Oh, he ate the knees. See, none of the above. Right into the knees, the waiting knees of Smith Garrett. Way too much time, and I figured this would catch up to him eventually. Man, nice hard clothesline. Can this stand out from the CWF oh. Atlantic Dojo? Rise to the occasion. Alexander is out on his feet. This young man may be on the verge of greatness. Oh my God, what a DDT. Caught him on it. Center of the ring, two. Oh, he almost beat him. Man, he almost beat him. We got a hair under two minutes left in this time limit. Man, the crowd, crowd's still split. Crowd's appreciating this amazing matchup. Going for the suplex. Alexander, I don't know if he's going to let him have it or not. No, he's got a very, very strong core. First, no. Oh, just, ooh, oh, college is Lung him to the floor. Yeah, Cedric is deceptively strong. I think Cedric just glanced up at that clock. Cedric may be Cedric may be trying to play for a draw here. Alexander may feel like he can't beat this kid. He's got one more minute. This kid may last 10 minutes with him. 60 seconds. Oh! Oh no! Or not. Oh no! Oh, oh god almighty! 
Alexander is playing for the draw. Alexander, he just said, keep the clock going. I don't think Alexander, I don't think Alexander thinks he can beat this kid. Maybe not, he's just pressuring him too much. He's playing for the draw. Or a count out at the very least. He's playing for the draw. Shotgun drop kick in the corner. Concussion. Might kick be a brain buster. On delivery. No! He's blocking it! He's blocking it! Smith Garrett is still alive! Whoa, referee! Oh, oh he hit him low! Oh my gosh! Oh, Lombard check! Lombard check! Cover! One, two, Cedric Alexander just played with the minds of everyone in this building. He stalled for as long as he possibly could because he knew he had that ace up the sleeve. He was going to go low. Cedric Alexander ran the clock out on Smith Garrett. combination of Eric Royal and Aaron Biggs, or was he actually abandoning one of his Riot teammates? I hope to somehow be able to get a word with the Riot or Nick Richards in the near future, but we did hear from Eric Andrews himself later in the night when he spoke publicly to his former tag team partner, Evan Banks, for the first time since leaving the Killbillies last year. I think everybody out here knows after tonight that you have got the biggest heart and are one of the toughest guys in that locker room, right? Evan, you prove to everybody that when you're on your game, nobody can stop you. And Evan, I can't have that. Oh my God! Oh. Unfortunately, we do not have a medical update on Evan Banks at this point, aside from that he appears to be out for the foreseeable future. Evan, from all of us here at CWF, we wish you the best and a speedy recovery. The other big news from last week was the return of the Kamikaze Kid as he faced Roy Wilkins. If Kazi won, Coach Gemini's whistle would be banned for life. But if Kazi lost, he would be forced to become Coach Gemini's water boy? Right now, let's take a look back at the dramatic conclusion of that match. 
Coach has come. We got to get Coach off. Robbie Walsh has got to get Coach off the apron. How he cannot not, allow this. How is this not a DQ? He cannot allow this. High stakes or not. Oh, oh, idiot Chappy, what is he doing? He's, what, is, what is going on in the ring? Does Chappy think we're going to pull off twin magic or something? I think he's trying to get Wilkins out. Uh-oh. Oh, he caught him in the chest. He just kicked him right in the heart. He may have crushed Wilkins on the way. Uh-oh, good night. Oh, my God, what is he about to do? Oh, a reverse go to sleep. Chappie is dead. He is freaking dead right now. I'm going to call it a sleep to go, and Chappie may never be seen again ever. Oh, the coach. Well, he's got that neck brace. He's choking him out with that neck brace. Ragging the crossbow. Boom. Golf swing. Oh, cradle. No. Oh, this is bullshit. Oh, he got him. The Kamikaze Kid will be the errand boy for the coach. Champy is, is dead and gone. Champy outranks one of the greatest in CWF history. Oh my God. Roy Wilkins. This This is bogus. This goofball Champy outranks one of the greatest in CWF history. We hope to have an update on what this means for the future of the Kamikaze Kid as he was slated to compete in the 2015 Johnny Weaver Cup Tournament, which kicks off right here next week on CWF Worldwide. Now let's take it to ringside with Brad Stutz and former Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion Eric Royal as they are set to call all the action for this exciting Hera vs. Title match between Jesse Adler and Ethan Alexander Sharp. Jesse Adler! <laughs> With the entire Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium chanting for a new champion, it is the Rising Generation League Championship versus the hair of Jesse Adler, Brad Stutz, and one of the coaches from the Mid-Atlantic Dojo, Eric Ace Royal, are in the booth. Eric, you have worked extensively with both these young men. What are we looking for here in this high-stakes Rising Generation League title match? Well, Brad, as you know already, these guys have wrestled two times already. Once at Battlecade, our anniversary event last year, where Ethan won that RGL championship, and, and they wrestled also again on an episode of one of our RGL episodes here, where Ethan Sharp once again pulled out another victory against Ad Jesse. Oh, oh, Adler! Adler went for it early! And I'm telling you, man, he goes for that shooting star press, and that might have been it. But Ethan, these guys know each other so well, Brass does. Ethan Sharp. Oh boy, Adler's gonna fly! Oh! He just came crashing down, and it hurts inside as he crashes into the concrete floor. Yeah. He's got. He's definitely got a. Jesse's got to fight up here. I mean, for for the past few matches, Ethan has definitely looked dominant for the majority of the matches. He has been messing with his hair the whole time. That's why he's led up to this match tonight. Jesse Adler has decided to put on, put up his prized possession, that hair that he holds so dear to the top of his head, and he wants to keep that and win that RGO championship that he's been fighting so long. Shoulders down. Two. Ethan Sharp actually went as far as to say that all Adler had was his hair. And I think that's what really fired up this young man. This is a great young athlete. Eric Rowe, I said a few moments ago you've worked extensively with both those guys. And I actually, I don't even know how much of that is true. Does Ethan Sharp come to practice? Does he spend much time at the middle leg? Oh, shoulders are down. Does this guy, you know, he feels very entitled for a rookie. From, from what I've heard, I, I haven't really worked. He's been there for the for a little bit. I've, I've, I've worked with him a little bit in the beginning, but uh, 
All of a sudden, I mean, as you can see now, he's, you know, he's the sharpest and, you know, richest man in wrestling. He's actually, oh, there he goes. Hair. Going to the hair. Uh-oh, uh-oh, shoulders are down here. Two. I mean, he, he uh, but I, I think he trains with, with the coach. I heard, he, I heard he had Roy Wilkins on retainer yeah, as a private yeah, tutor. Yeah, yeah. Along with the coach. Well, you know, high stakes in this one, as is tradition at Absolute Justice. We thank you for joining us here on CWF Worldwide. Last week, we saw the Kamikaze Kid pretty much lose it all. Yeah. Will the same fate happen to Jesse Adler here at our summer supercard, Absolute Justice? It's always tradition, high stakes matchups here at Absolute oh, Justice. Oh, what a great move from Adler. Adler. Great thinking. Frankenstein there. Went all the way to the floor. I think Jesse's gonna fly here. He likes to fly. He is a risk taker. Definitely. He is a daredevil. One of his idols, of course, is actually Andrew. Oh, wow. Ethan jumped up on the apron. I think he was gonna try to swing at whatever came. But he wasn't here we go. Woo. Beautiful by Adler. Yeah, and Adler, you know, one of the people he's looked up to the most here is Chief of Kid, also known as the boy Andrew Everett. That's one of the idols that he has here, one of his favorite guys to watch. So you can see he kind of patterns his style around that. As you can see, Ethan Sharp, very calculated, very scientific. Oh, shoulders down, could be it. And you can tell that he has been trained by Coach Gemini and Roy Wilkins. Worth pointing out, of course, that we will see Andrew Everett in our main event later on tonight. Ultra Jet Championship on the line. Our third of three huge title matchups this week on CWF Worldwide. Adler slugging away. I'm telling you now. Oh, oh, wow, he's he's down. Down. He, they know that too well. I mean, he's been using that hair for a while. In the past two matchups, Ethan has went to that hair a bunch of times and Jesse knows it. It's got to be great, Eric World, to see these rising Generation League young wrestlers grow in confidence, to see their athletic abilities grow, to see what they can do in the ring grow. These are two of the most improved wrestlers anywhere in the Mid-Atlantic for the past 365 days. They are duking it out right now at our Summer Supercard. Oh, wow. Look at the athleticism of this young man. Wait a minute again. Oh! Big torch, big uh, Enzo Gary there. Brastos, you are completely right. I mean, these two kids have worked so hard. Whether you like Shoulder Ethan Sharp down, or not, be it. Oh, oh man. I mean, whether you like Ethan Sharp or not, he goes in there. He's got some type of resilience to him. He's got a lot of cunning to him. And Jesse Adler, you know he's got a lot of fire in him. Yeah. He doesn't really show it in his emotions and his anger, but you can tell he's got that fire. He's been gaining a lot of confidence as time has been pressing on in his young career. Whether, whether he goes to uh, the same, oh, he went for that big uppercut. He didn't get it. Oh, big scissors kick there. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, they know each other's moves so well. I was going to say, whether he goes to the traditional practice sessions or not, you can tell this kid has put a lot of time in the ring. Uh-oh, Adam's gonna fly! Could be the frog splash! Could be, be the 450! Could be the... Oh! Wait a minute! Oh, he got the referee! He crushed Robbie Walsh! Did he crush Ethan Sharp? No, Ethan Sharp slipped out! What the he got the ref! Yes, he did! Ethan oh, Sharp he goes. is dead. waiting on him! They don't call him the sharpest man in wrestling for a reason! He's going for that move! Oh, he hit it! Took his head off with that lariat variation! But Robbie Walsh is down. I don't know what Ethan calls that. I've never seen him hit that move before. I've seen him go for it a bunch of times. But, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is he? Wait no. a minute. Ethan Sharp has not won this match. match uh, Ethan Sharp has not won this match. Referee is down. The match ain't over yet. Referee is down. Ethan Sharp has not won this matchup. He may be sharp, but I don't think uh, I feel safe with him in, with those scissors in his hands. Wait a minute, no, no, he's going to cut the hair. Wait, what's going on? Who's coming in right now? That's the RGL commissioner, Joey Hogan. Joey Hogan's going to officiate. He's going to lay that law down in this match right now. Joey Hogan and Ethan have had some issues over the past few months. That's the commissioner of the rising generation. He did take the scissors away. Is he going to take over as the official in this matchup? Oh, my God. No. Ethan 
Kevin Sharp has said as champion he should be in charge of the RGL, not Joey Hogan. Yeah. And Joey Hogan just let him have it, Ace. I think that Joey Hogan has had enough of Ethan Sharp's bad mouthing and jaw jacking, and I guess he was just fed up. Wait, oh, oh, here we go. And the combination. I think he's going for it right here. This could be it, Brad. We could have it. What? Oh, he hesitated on the shooter. He hesitated on the shooter. Why'd he hesitate? I think he's going for that shooting star. Oh, wait, no. He hesitated on the shooting star. star. What are we going to see here? He's going for 50. He's going, he's going for. He's going all the way he to the top. He wants to go big. He wants to go big. He's going to fly. Here. Boom. Oh, there it is. Crush him. Two. Go. Go. We got a new champion. We got a new champion. League stands tall as the new leader of the CWF Mid-Atlantic RGL. championship bout we have tonight as both the Mid-Atlantic Television Championship and the PWI Ultra J Championship will be defended right here. And now let's take you to some exclusive footage from our pre-show earlier today right here at the Sportatorium where Brad Stutz attempted to interview Andrew Everett. Andrew Everett wrestled all the way across the country just last night, hopped on a plane to make it here. Um, for anyone that may not know, talk a little bit about where you've been, your travels. You've been on at least one international tour. Uh, for anybody that may not know, fill them in on where you've been in the world, what you've been doing, and who you've uh, faced off against in your travels. Uh, it's been pretty crazy since coming back from the knee injury in February. and um, I uh, actually came back to a international tour that was my first match back in uh, eight months. And I was in England and finished off in Germany, and it was a blast. Tell everybody, people that follow wrestling on the internet, uh, some of the names that you've come across, some of the names that you've been in the ring with in the past few months, and kind of your impressions on all of it. Um, first match back was against Johnny Gargano. I'm sure some of you know him, and uh, he's an incredible competitor. Uh, in Germany, I went out in the tournament to a guy named Tommy In from Holland is uh, one of the hardest hitters in professional wrestling. He knocked me unconscious, pretty much. Um, let's see. I uh, knocked one off my list, and I worked probably the best hot flyer in the world today, Ricochet. And that was uh, in PWG. That was a really good one. Just last night in Reseda, California, you and our own Trevor Lee against the Young Bucks. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that one. It was just 24 hours ago. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, Rosita wasn't that kind to us last night, and uh, due to certain circumstances, we are no longer the PWG Tag Team Champions. Uh, all right, you're getting back. That being said, I'm pretty sure this isn't over. Yeah. Is this yes! like a bigger problem? Oh! Yeah! There's nobody to believe CWF more than Andrew Everett. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mega Man, there's all the names you've been dropping for the last 10 minutes. About everything you've been doing and everywhere you've been going. You know where you haven't been? You haven't been in Burlington. You haven't been in this building. You haven't been anywhere around me. You want to talk about what's been happening here instead of all over the world? I'll tell you what's been happening. I have been defending the Ultra J. Successfully. Defending the Ultra J, you know what, buddy? Yeah. 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 I deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Hey, see what's across your shoulder right there? 
That's mine now, bud. Is it? Whoa! Some would say it's the belt that Andrew Everett made famous, Ethan Case. Made it famous. Yes. Made it famous. If, yes, it was, if he made it famous, wouldn't he there still you go, have Ricky. it? Ooh. Would I be Ultra J champion? Hey, no. No, I would not. You know, ask some people where the. Get your ass in the back. Get my ass in the back. I hate to tell you this, home slice. Yeah. This is my house. Oh, this is your house? No. This is my house. house. I built. You can build it all you want. Who's the champion, brother? Holy Who's the champion? For how much longer, bud? How much longer are you going to be champion? Forever. Commission me to step Let's go. Keep that in your mind, brother. Keep that in your mind. Not an ultra J at all. Yeah, I see it. It's mine. I take it home every show. Oh, it's <laughs> You're going back to Georgia. Really disappointed. Oh, no. It's going to the same spot where it came in my trunk and back to Atlanta. Yeah. Now you're going to lose it tonight. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. Gentlemen, that's later tonight. Wrap that knee up tight. Okay. Wrap it up. That's Thanks later everybody. tonight. Ethan Case, since you are out here. Since you are out here. Ethan I see you. I see you. Yes. I assume that your intent is to sports entertain us all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ultra J champ in the house! What an incredible main event that's going to be between Andrew Everett and Ethan Case right here on CWF Worldwide. And now let's take you back to the ring where the upstart Darius Lockhart is ready for his one on one match against Chet Sterling for the Mid Atlantic Television title. Title? Right here. Go down. My crotch. It's the only time. Go ahead. My crotch. You can go. You're right here. Now look back up. I'm right here. I'm right here. Look me in the eyes. Come on. Come on. Open it up. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your CWF Mid Atlantic Television Champion. Time. Come on, let's hurry this up. That belt's coming on with me, buddy. That suitcase is gonna be a little light. You ready? Yeah. Ready, big dog? Are you ready? You ready? Yo, I look ready. I know I look ready. Yeah. Woohoo! I'm ready. Bring it one fall with the traditional 10-minute Mid-Atlantic television title time limit. And this one is another instance, Cecil Scott, of a rising young man. Really two rising young men with a huge opportunity here. But in a short amount of time, Chet Sterling has positioned himself. He has risen up the ranks as one of the best in the Mid-Atlantic period. A win by Darius Lockhart could catapult him, put him on the map in a big way, and win him the Mid-Atlantic Television Championship. Yes, it could. Darius Lockhart has made great strides in just a very short amount of time. And great chain wrestling there by Chet Sterling, by the way. And I'm pumped up right now. I was actually, I, I was a little late getting out here. I was talking to the new RGL champion, Jesse Adler, back there. Just so proud of that kid. Amazing matchup. So many incredible young athletes here in CWF Mid-Atlantic. North Carolina has become such a hotbed for professional wrestling. One hour of CWF Mid-Atlantic this week. You get Cedric Alexander. You get Andrew Everett. You get the Ultra J champion, Ethan Case. And you get rising stars from the Carolinas, like Chet Sterling, Darius Lockhart, Smith Garrett, Jesse Adler, ooh, and even Ethan Sharp. Shoulders are down. So much incredible wrestling talent under the age of 30 that is coming out of North Carolina. Cecil Scott, I'm 16 years in this wonderful sport. 
I can never remember a time when there was so much incredible wrestling, not just in North Carolina, but all over the country. And CWF Mid-Atlantic absolutely showcasing some of the brightest young stars in the game. Yes, we are. And now, I mean, it's really a great time to be a wrestling fan. There's never been a more a, a time where, where it's more accessible and more, it's so easy to just be a fan. And I, I, you know, not to put pat ourselves on the back, but we do produce some of the best young athletes anywhere. And do you remember being under 30? No, me neither. I do not, unfortunately. Whoa, the line heads up. Oh, kick right to the gut from Sterling. A lot of my 20s are a blur, and Darius Lockhart may be a blur right now. Beautiful five arm, very Terry Taylor ish. Yes, sir. And the one thing you'll notice about these two, they just, they both have just unbelievable motors. Like, they just do not stop. Sterling, oh, reversed. Oh, quick as a cat to the ropes, my gosh. That's what I'm talking about. Sterling, gorgeous drop kick. Cover from the television champion. Sterling has had his problems in recent weeks with the Ultra J champion, Ethan Case. Ethan Case feels like he should be the man carrying two belts around here, not Chet Sterling. And I noticed, oh, ah, ooh, 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 that could be a concussion right there. That was incredibly dangerous. Kevin Pierce checking right there on Chet Sterling. We saw just a week ago uh, Evan Banks uh, in such a horrible state in that matchup, and, and Chet Sterling may find himself in a similar situation. Situation here in the back of his head just cracked. I mean it cranked. I mean it slammed against the canvas. Yes, it did. And it's like it's like being in a car crash. And that's exactly what Darius Lockhart wanted. He's a great athlete, but he does prefer a slower pace than one Chet Sterling. He is more of a like we're seeing right now, he likes to tie you up. He will grapple with you a lot more. And almost a stump puller, but pulled him all the way over. Oh, nice reversal! And Chet, for such a young guy, you know, with only a couple of years in, in professional wrestling, is such a smart competitor. Ooh, great move from Lockhart. Lockhart, in only, I believe, his second or third year as a pro, is already a thinking man's wrestler. Cover! And almost got him. Lockhart is already a thinking man's wrestler in that ring, and that was a great, honestly, a veteran move. He's a young man in our sport, but he wrestles like a veteran. Yes, he does. He actually reminds me of almost a younger Roy Wilkins. Very much so. I absolutely agree with that. And, you know, just the way his movement around the ring, his pacing and everything is very Roy Wilkins-like. And a nice uh, dragon sleeper here, actually. A very dangerous move. Crowd here coming up for Chet Sterling, one of the most popular wrestlers in the Sportatorium. And he sent him to the floor. Sterling to his feet. I was going to say earlier, ooh, oh, using that shoulder. Hold on. Might get a sunset flip. Yes. We might. Shoulders are down. A little surprised to see Chet Sterling using his shoulder. Oh, oh huge God. A running knee strike. Oh, my Lord, steal it. He's going to win the belt. Ooh, man, that was right to the front of the head. Perfect precision. I was going to say, Sterling, he got curb stomped into the cement by the Ultra J champion Ethan Case a few weeks ago. I'm surprised to see him using his shoulder as an offensive weapon. The shoulder and the collarbone really took a beating with that curb stomp on the floor. Yeah, he's just now gotten to where he doesn't have to have it wrapped up. He may have to have it wrapped up again after this one. Darius Lockhart, who was drawn a few weeks ago as the Battle Bowl challenger for Chet Sterling. He was drawn out of the lethal lottery. Ethan Case inter interjected himself into the matchup, forced a three-way opportunity. Darius Lockhart never got his rightful one-on-one -on -one title shot as the lethal lottery dictates. He is getting it here tonight at our summer supercard, Absolute Justice. Wherever you are in the world, we thank you for joining us here on CWF Worldwide as we present to you action from our summer supercard, the biggest event of the summer, Absolute Justice. We may see a new television champion here on this special episode of CWF Worldwide. Three championships, three championships on the line. One has already changed hands, and Darius Lockhart is wrestling a hell of a matchup like we may see another title change. Absolutely. He is putting everything together here. I've not seen any mistakes from Darius Lockhart.
And I think the big difference, he had time to prepare, time to scout, and maybe time to take the head off of Chet Sterling right now. Ooh, knee to the back of the head. It was like a Brody knee. It came off the ropes to the back of the head. Really focused offense from Lockhart. Lockhart into the cover. Two, two. Sterling fights out. Man, Sterling just has unbelievable fire. I, I don't think I've ever seen this much fire in a young competitor. It, wow, that's nice. He's dropping that knee pad. Lockhart has clearly been working on his knee strike game in recent weeks. Oh, no. Ooh, didn't get him. No, rolled him up. Two, Sterling avoided it. Oh, there he is. Perfect precision. He drove all his weight right into the sternum. What? That rough rider is such a deceptively devastating hold. Think about Two. jumping with your whole body weight and come crashing down on the sternum of your opponent. A very devastating hold. That's it. Two. Two. Man, he, he had enough time to recover. It took a good 20 seconds or so for him to make that cover. Eight minutes gone in this television title contest. And we saw Cedric Alexander really work the clock to his advantage earlier tonight. Darius Lockhart does not have that luxury. A draw gets him nothing. A draw saves the title for Sterling. But of all the television champions we've ever seen, Sterling has used the time limit to his advantage the least. He wants to win it or lose it in the ring. Yes, sir. I've never seen him try to work that clock. And Darius, he would get the old, he would get the old no prize, as they say. Slugging it out. Very dangerous. Ah, headbutt to the face. Ooh. They are duking it out man what a right hand that was that huge uppercut uh-oh sterling is poised might be getting that blockbuster oh, oh. good lord he drilled him right into the canvas two three Chet Sterling with the blockbuster successfully defends the television title against a game effort of darius lockhart Ted Sterling keeps rolling. Who's going to be able to take that TV title from him? Oh, wait, is that? Brad, you hear that music? An incredible oh, win man. for the television champion, but hold on. Oh, Sterling is ready to fight! Yeah, I think he's tired of this clown interrupting him. Sterling is standing his ground, and there he is, the international Ultra J champion, Ethan Case. Ethan Case is scheduled for our main event tonight, and he's not waiting for Chet to leave. The International Ultra J Championship Ultra is J on the line next. In the house. This is Chassie Taylor inviting you to come see us live and in person at the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium. Saturday, July 11th. See all things CWF by liking us on Facebook at CWF Mid-Atlantic. No matter what, it's still going to hurt.
Town. Introducing first the champion, fighting out of Orlando, Florida, here by the quest for contracts, Ethan Taylor. And his opponent, Cecil Scott, it is a big fight atmosphere in our main event this week on CWF Worldwide. Ultra J Championship is at stake. There's the bell. So much excitement is in the air. Ethan Case has ran the Ultra J division ever since capturing the championship back in October. But he has never faced, perhaps, the greatest high flyer in the world. Arguably, the man who put the Ultra J Championship on the map, he has never defeated Andrew Everett. That is our main event this week on CWF Worldwide. You can feel the excitement in the air. And you know why it's a big fight feel? Because it's a big fight, Brad Stutz. Absolutely. Both men feeling each other out here in our main event this week. We have seen... Oh! Ooh. And right to the jaw. Who is it's starting fast? Pele in the back of the head. He may have it. One, two. Oh, he almost won it. Andrew Everett almost won the championship in seconds. And don't let the fact that he's a high flyer fool you. He hits as hard as anybody. Oh. I was going to say, we have already seen one championship change hands tonight on Worldwide. Case avoids whatever Everett was going for, but just because you're in the ring does not mean you are safe from the Apex Agility. Nice springboard cross body into a cover. Everett is going for pins early. Everett is going for the win early. Once again, just 24 hours ago, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee faced the Young Bucks in Reseda, California for Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Everett got a little sleep, hopped on a plane, flew the entire distance of the country to RDU Airport in Raleigh, North Carolina, maybe caught 40 minutes of shut-eye before heading to the building. Uh-oh, heads up. Everett gonna fly here. Perfect precision cover to Andrew Everett. Not wrestling with a 30-minute time limit in mind. Andrew Everett is wrestling to win this championship yeah. early. Got to wonder if fatigue may be a factor for this young man. Well, we see this a lot. You know, guys that maybe, you know, in a tournament have wrestled earlier in the night. They try yes. to go for it early. They try to get it done early. And that's a smart move. Whoa. A lot of motion there, though. Ooh, clipped the knee, he clipped the knee, he clipped the knee. It is no secret, Andrew Everett had major reconstructive surgery on that knee here, what, about 12 months ago exactly. That's about a $38,000 knee that Ethan Case is stomping on inside the ring. Yes, it is, and I think Ethan Case knew exactly what he's doing in the early going. Let Andrew Everett use that energy. Let him put out all that, all that speed. Let him wear himself out. Ethan Case is no dummy in that ring. No, he's not. And you are seeing it right now, yanking on that knee. Twisting and cranking on it. Oh, it's getting ugly. And a variation of the calf stretch here. Ooh, flirting with that five count was Ethan Case. And I think Robbie Walsh has kind of reached his wits end tonight, so he may DQ a man. Mm-hmm. Robbie Walsh was in the middle of a, a car crash earlier tonight in the Rising Generation League title match. A little surprised to see him up on his feet. Tough, tough officials here at CWF Mid-Atlantic as there are wrestlers and another shot to the knee. Is, it a, is, is every opponent that Andrew Everett faces for the rest of his career gonna, gonna target that knee? Is that knee a bullseye in every match Andrew Everett has for the rest of his life? I've I got a, a kind of a, a parallel for you. If you recall, Shawn Michaels in the second half of his career, no matter what, guys went for his back. 
till the day he retires. That's a great point. That and really is a great point. I think Everett, unfortunately, has that to look forward to. And again, flirting with that five count. And even Case, no matter what you say about his attitude or his outlook on things, is a brilliant competitor in there. Everett gets some quickness going. <laughs> a drop kick to the knee, though. You notice he caught him so hard, the momentum flipped him over. Yeah, Ethan Case is wrestling a hell of a matchup. Ooh, DDT's the leg. He is wrestling a hell of a matchup so far. Yes, he is, and we know how vicious he can be. Hooking that leg again. I mean, I bring it up all the time, but if you recall, he won that title by knocking out Lance Luke with a straight right hand. Mm -hmm. Just cold cocked him. Absolutely. One of the most memorable moments of 2014. Perhaps the most shocking result in CWF history. Ethan Case on his first night in CWF Mid-Atlantic became the International Ultra J Champion. And Case is focused on that knee like a dog gnawing on a bone. Ethan Case has got that knee. And you notice he's not doing anything fancy. He's not busting out a lot of fancy moves on that leg. He's just pounding on it and cranking on it. No dragon screw leg whips, no big flying splashes on the leg or anything like that. Mm, yes. man, look, man, look how much trouble he had reversing that whip, though. Yes! Oh, oh, he caught himself, but he, oh, that could have been real, real bad. He caught himself, but I don't know if the knee can support his weight. When he, when he, oh, oh, he's trying to spring. Oh, he couldn't do it. Oh, it coming. Oh, we're going to, we're going to see the champion retain right here. Shoulders down. Two. Man, that leg is gone, and we're still pretty early in this match. He's still in it. Everett, who is hurt bad? Uh, and Everett, it looked like he wanted to haul up and punch him, but couldn't quite do it. And I just had a feeling as soon as I saw Everett go up to that rope, something was about to happen. Ooh, he's got to be careful. He's got to be mindful of those shoulders being down. Yeah, it's easy to get caught napping. Two, only two. Oh, caught him right in the jaw. Right in the jaw, and this is exactly what Andrew Everett did not want where this match is at right now. Case standing triumphantly. Andrew Everett crumbled on the canvas. Cover again. Both men here in our main event this week on CWF Worldwide are going for covers. Both men are aiming to win this matchup. So much pride, so much pride is on the line. We saw Jesse Adler earlier tonight rise up where he now stands atop the Rising Generation League. Undeniably, you cannot argue, the winner of this matchup will ooh, be the man who, without dispute, stands atop the Ultra J division throughout all of Pro Wrestling International. Yes, it would, and that includes many, many promotions, not here in North Carolina, but elsewhere as well. Absolutely, yeah. CWF Mid-Atlantic, Premier Wrestling Experience, Omega, and so many more just in North Carolina. Dozens of wrestling organizations all around the globe. PWIPro.com has all the information of our parent organization, Pro Wrestling International, independent organizations all over the world. If you'd like to join Pro Wrestling International, PWIPro.com has got the information right there. And the winner of this contest will represent all of Pro Wrestling International as the Ultra J Champion. Andrew Everett has held the Ultra J Championship on two occasions before. Who heads up. Winning it once from Xyrus and once from diehard Eddie Edwards. Both times back when he was under the mask of the Chiva Kid, Andrew Everett. You know, and he's, it's funny you mentioned that match with Xyrus because it played out very similar to what we're seeing right now. And I'll expand on that in a moment. I was going to say, Everett has yet to win the Ultra J Championship since his career took off. Those were in the early years of his career prior to his show-stopping performance at the first National Pro Wrestling Day that catapulted him into the national and international spotlight. Woo! Backslide? Backslide, yes. Woo, he slipped right out of it. Woo! Oh, oh God. Spiked oh. him on his head. God almighty. We may see a new champ. Two. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be ironic 
if Ethan Case were to be knocked out. And that's what led him to lose the championship. Man, it looked like it was about to happen. You normally see guys try to get a full rotation when they take that move, but he landed right on the front of his face. And uh, bring back what I was talking about. When he won the title from Cyrus, he had a very badly injured shoulder in that match and pulled it out from the jaws of defeat. Can he do the same with a badly injured knee? Effort is going up to the top rope. Normally, that is where he lives, but can he pull it off with such perfect execution on that bad leg? Oh, he, oh, oh he took too long. He was so unsure. Ethan Case had time to roll out of the way. That's the thing with those high-risk maneuvers. You got to be absolutely sure, and you've got to be quick. You got to do it promptly, or else what will just happen will happen, and the man will roll out of the way. Yes, it will. Oh, right on the knee again. Focused offense. Figure four. Yes. One of the most painful submission holds there is. Case has used this figure four in the past. It came back to bite him back at Battle Bowl, the Lethal Lottery. Ooh. When he had Darius Lockhart, that three-way matchup that we talked about earlier in the program. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, Chet snuck in the back door and pinned him. Yes, he did. Sterling pinned Lockhart while he was trapped in the figure four. But we, we, Everett has got to be mindful of the shoulders. Uh, referee Robbie Walsh is right there. And if Everett leaves his shoulders down for a three count, he will lose this matchup. Ethan Case will retain the title. Or he may just reverse the pressure on Ethan Case. Yeah, we roll it over. It, in effect, becomes an Indian deathlock, and all the pressure is reversed. And now it is Ethan Case that is screaming into the heavens, and Ethan Case makes the ropes. But does Everett have anything that he can, he can put together to get some momentum going in this match? It seems like every time he gets a couple of things together, that knee just bites him right in the butt again. Oh, man, aggressively into the corner. Yes! Oh. Big boot right in the face. Yeah, kick to the face will usually go ahead and do what you need yes! it to do. Oh. Man, that quickness kind of came yeah. back on him there. Oh, he caught him. Oh, that was a great move from Ethan Case. Right into the half crab. Caught him in the half crab. Will Andrew ever give up? Everett's as tough as they come, but that leg can't take a whole lot more punishment. Slips out, rolls him up, cover. Kicks out at two. Ooh, big enziguri. Another kick to the head. Where these two are just hammering each other. These two are literally giving it all they got in this 100 degree heat. We haven't talked about it too much tonight. There's been so much fast paced, exciting action, but it is hot. It is a hot summer night in the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium in Gibsonville, North Carolina. That's because I already had a heat stroke 50 minutes ago, Brad. That's why I haven't talked about it. But Everett, he's gonna try to go back up again, maybe. Or not yet, Ethan Case back on his feet. Oh, ho, ho, ho. If you can't do what you need to, a good old right hand will usually do the trick. Oh, that's it! Oh, that's it, that's the knockout! That's it! That's it! One, two, two! Andrew Everett stays alive, and look at the look on Ethan Case's face. Andrew Everett has survived that mighty knockout that took out Lance Lude and won the Ultra J Championship for, for Ethan Case. Everett has survived it, and now has Ethan Case emptied his arsenal against Andrew Everett. Yeah, what else does he have left? He's got to come up with something, because if you let Andrew Everett stay in it, you will get caught. Oh, no, he's set him up. The crowd here is getting hostile. Yes, they are. Against Ethan Case. Oh, the former Cheetah Kid is still fighting. Oh, what an uppercut. Well, there have been some, some amazing strikes tonight on CWF Worldwide right here at Absolute Justice, our summer supercard. Yeah, Everett, whatever Case is trying to set up, he cannot get caught in this. Everett using those huge Tongan headbutts, but he may have just got his clock cleaned right there. A second big right hand. Ethan Case has a mean streak, and we're seeing it. Superplex, maybe. Oh! 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 Yeah! Oh, he went face first into the 
of Candace. Everybody held their breath to see what was going to happen next. He went face first to the canvas. Andrew Everett on one leg is going to go for it all here. What is Drew got? Could it be the 630, the shooting star, the 450? What could it be? 630. No! Oh, oh my God, he crashed. He crashed hard into the canvas, too. Oh, Ethan Cave is still the Ultra J champion. Andrew Everett. The knee was tortured, and one risk too many. And Ethan K stands atop Pro Wrestling International as the Ultra J champion. Fans, thank you so much for joining us this week on CWF Worldwide. I did it. I did it. Elijah!